and uh, uh, very present at the moment uh, because we are here, uh, related to having your feedback and your response to where we should play in, uh, a, a, a role in the future. At the moment, um, the situation is that the, uh, as you all know, Thailand has uh, a couple of years ago uh, been upgraded to a high income country. I think it was the World Bank. And, uh, and the development in Thailand has long been quite advanced compared to development countries, developing countries. And uh, we do not provide development assistance to Thailand as such which means that when we enter in uh, collaboration with Thailand, we have an interest in it as well. And the interest uh, is obvious for us because we want our universities to be more international. That's why we, we shaped the Erasmus Mundus program. The Erasmus Mundus program was there to learn from what happened in the European program version of the program, the Erasmus program, expand it, and let me use the word force or give incentive to our universities to become more international. And that's the example of mobility being a driving factor. And uh, Mr. McDaren mentioned the three million which was achieved only recently of mobilities within the European area. Uh, that is significant because all these would be multiplied, as also mentioned by Darren, and they would be the networks that we will be, will be building on in the future. Erasmus Mundus, with more than 600 Thai students and uh, at all levels of education having been exchanged, is another network. And I'm very pleased to see that we have a strong chapter, not only of the Thai Alumni Association, but also we have had uh, the, the president of the ASEAN Alumni Association being a Thai for a period and the Alumni Association is increasingly linking up with other existing uh, sectors. Uh, I can inform you that the, uh, sometimes the business chambers, uh, uh, they have events uh, or they are together at events with the alumni because we see uh, the alumni is engaged in a lot of important sectors when they come back with good educations and having these networks. So, um, in the future, um, the way that uh, we, we will be working is uh, trying to strengthen networks. And we also have um, this, uh, this, what we call the Thailand EU Cooperation Facility, which is our bilateral program, bilateral uh, between Thailand and the European Union. And that program, the second phase, which is, as our ambassador mentioned, funding for the experts that we have here at the moment. And we have been doing the last in other sectors, in trade and in uh, energy and in science, and also looking at uh, some aspects of, of uh, uh, human rights. Um, uh, the, uh, the important thing is that the program it comes to an end. Uh, this is actually today, this program comes to an end. But even more important than that is that there is a continuation for 42 months until 15th of February uh, 2017. We will be working with the ministries, with the line agencies, and for education, of course, it's the office of the, uh, the o, o, OCHC, the Office of the Higher Education Commission, and um, working with the, the bureaus of international cooperation strategy and with the uh, bureaus of evaluation and standards, and those bureaus that are engaged both with universities and at a strategy and policy level. So what will we be, uh, how will we be able to engage, uh, to engage with this, the new program? The new program, with the name of it is uh, EU Thailand Policy Dialogue Support Facility. 
So you see, it indicates that we will be supporting or facilitating policy dialogues, and maybe I would prefer to use the word strategy dialogues, because policies is something that our countries have, or the EU has, and Thailand has. And I think what we will be working on is at the strategy level, and the meeting uh, encompassing, or meeting uh, together where policies are strong, and developing strategies there. So, um, this will take place over the coming three years, and those areas that we envisage at this moment are only broad headers, broad uh, areas of cooperation. Internationalization is an important area, and I would, at this, uh, on this occasion, I would like to ask the audience. Uh, it doesn't need to be right now, but as part of this panel session, when we reach that point, I would like to ask the audience here for your uh, perceptions on where it would be, where you think it would be important that we draw on European experts. We have them here, they work with some institutions. We organize meetings like this together with the Office of the High Education Commission. We do exchanges or other things that you could find were important. Um, what would be the nature of those and which areas would the audience, and also, of course, my, my fellow panelists here see as, as important? Of course, we are not deciding here, but uh, those points that may come up, they would. Uh, to the extent that they are substantiated, would uh, they would get the attention they deserve? They would be discussed with uh, with the secretary general and the deputy secretary general, and and uh, we would uh, see how we can encompass for this, and putting it in, of course, a, a broader strategy on on how we can enhance international relations. Um, having said that, I would also like just to mention for your common interest, and because we have talked a lot about mobilities, uh, our ambassador referred to a new program that's called SHARE, and I have difficulty with the name because it's not a logical acronym. It's, the name is something like it came from EU, um, EU support to higher education regional collaboration. That's how it is. ASEAN Regional Corporation. That program has more than 10 million euros. That program has two components. This is at the regional level. And one component is quality assurance. And the way forward there would be working with the existing uh, agencies and entities that are already addressing this at regional and national level. But to improve the quality of education across ASEAN countries, where we can see uh, that certain countries uh, may need particular attention because they are not up to the same standards as China. The other uh, element of that uh, would be also credit transfers, credit transfer systems. But if we look at the more than 10 million, a little bit more than half of it is intended for mobility, as we were discussing, one of the driving factors in international education. And those mobilities, and this is an entirely new creation, some of these mobilities would be for intra asian mobilities. So scholarships between Malaysia and Thailand Laos and Thailand and the other ASEAN countries would be imagined are, 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 will be managed through this instrument. There is also, uh, in this scholarship, some of them would also be uh, scholarships to Europe as we know them from the Erasmus Mundus. But I think it's important when we talk about regional integration to note that there is this strong element and encouragement. Or integration also on the mobilities in line with 
the experiences that have been expressed on the ongoing uh, mobility programs in Dallas. Yeah, I would like to start here. Thank you. I think it would be uh, very interesting to hear from Dr. Kennedy on how he sees the potential for, for this collaboration in, in the future. While I understand that um, matters haven't been finalized, um, I'm sure that uh, there, there are indications or emerging ideas on, on the benefits of such collaboration. Well, uh, just before I address your question, I would like to uh, tell you a little bit more. I just came back from Australia last night. Uh, I was invited by the Queensland State Government to pay a visit for 10 days there uh, to 10 new cities in Queensland. It's, a, it's a fully supported by the, the Queensland State Government. Uh, I have learned that even in Australia, they are promoting inter international station very much. They ex especially in the Green Life State, they propose that 10 universities in Queensland must have at least 10% of international students. 10% at least. No matter it is a public or private university. I've learned that there's one private university in Australia, that's one university in uh, all course. I have asked the question, why? Why? Even Australia want to have uh, international students. It's a matter of uh, trade and business or not? They said no. Because we think that the international students, not they learn from Australian University, but Australian learn a lot from international students. They learn about uh, their capability from that varies, varies from country to country. And that reflects the competitiveness of each country. When we conduct research at high level, such as the PhD program, sometimes we uh, do research on a topic related to the country that those students come from. So as what we learn again about inside information of that country. And this is why they try to promote internationalization of these universities. So let's come back to the topic that we are talking about today on international relations. I think it's quite important for Thailand now, especially for those students who are not familiar in working with this kind of activities. Why? I think now it's important for you to make your institution or university visible to the rest of the world. Why I say this? Because the, the, the world now is smaller. Your student, your grade, have to be able to work anywhere. And those who want to employ your student have to know the university. Like that, when you want to recruit students to your university time, there are applicants for students in ASEAN countries in which you have never heard about that university before. How can you ensure that the students who are applying to your university are qualified to your program? Unless you know that university. It's the same when your students go out. Uh, if they know your university, I think your student, your colleagues can easily find jobs and be able to work anywhere. So it's very important that you have to make your university visible to the rest of the world. And how that can come with the international station? You have to work very hard on this one. 
not for the sake of university, but for your student and the future of your university as well. I, I fully understand that. Now, when we talk about this, you will always say that, oh, our input is not good enough. We in four years, five years, a city at university, how can we improve their capability? How can we improve their English proficiency? But the society has a very high hope, no matter how your students are in terms of quality. But when they are at your university, you have to make them, you have to improve them to reach the standards, the international, international standards. But this is very important, I think. And I have observed that with Penn University in Australia, there are a lot of ASEAN students, especially from Vietnam and Indonesia. I met these two, I mean, the students from these two countries everywhere. And I also met that, I mean, met uh, Vietnamese start working in universities there. But I couldn't find time working in Australian University as a, a staff of that university, not as a, a postdoc or PhD candidates. So I think now uh, it's a very important issue that we have to think about that. You know, we have a population very close, I can about 68 million Vietnam now, maybe close to 90 million. So population are not that big, not so big yet. But why we could not we cannot see Thai people in the international arena. I think we have to think seriously about this. But and I think that your job, your university to increase the competency of your student and graduates, to be able to be anywhere, work anywhere. Otherwise, can you imagine in the next few years what will happen to Thailand? We are waiting for a job in Thailand. We are not be able to compete with the others in the other countries. Uh, Okay, let's come back to your question, right? Uh, I'm, I'm smiling because I'm, I'm reflecting on the, the first time I met you. You told me that you did a PhD in my country, in, in Ireland, in, was it 1983? 1981-1983. In recent times, I've been reflecting on the visibility of my own country in, in Southeast Asia in Asia at large, uh, I find it absolutely amazing that at that time you had the, the confidence, uh, even with the limited knowledge that was available on Ireland and, and the universities there, to, to go on and pursue a course of study there. So um, I see you as a, a great example of international students who will deal with uncertainty, despite the lack of information they will go ahead and, and make uh, the, the context their own. Uh, there are important points raised about the, the barriers to further inbound and outbound mobility. Um, and perhaps, uh, Professor Talaya, you can reflect on some of those as well. Well, I'd like to add to the remark. I think this is very important, uh, uh, the remarks are very important to me in that we really should have more international students in Thailand. But how? Uh, from my experience, uh, the uh, students in ASEAN, they are so ready, they are eager to come to study in Thailand. But uh, the majority of them need full grant, full scholarship. And to be 
uh, the resources we have is quite limited for the uh, for this endeavor. So uh, I think uh, it's nice to hear from uh, 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 the that perhaps he would, perhaps I, I I I hope that he will try to push this idea uh, to the government. Uh, it's a very good form of investment for the government uh, to give uh, grants, to give scholarships to ASEAN students to come here. Uh, uh, the, I heard some MPs uh, rejecting uh, this concept. Uh, why do you use taxpayer money uh, for, for the, of the Thai people to support foreigners? Uh, but this is, they don't realize it's for investment, like the Australian government is doing. That uh, if you have uh, ASEAN students studying in Thailand, um, uh, they will become ambassadors of Thailand in, when they go back to their uh, respective countries. It's a very good investment. And uh, so I'd like to urge uh, the Deputy Secretary General that, uh, to push this. Uh, to have more uh, grants. But, uh, well, if you don't have, uh, cannot really give full grants to full-time students, uh, how about increasing AIMS, uh, increasing the level of grants available in AIMS, that's the uh, exchange uh, students. If they spend one, one semester here, that's good enough, you know, if they can't spend two years here. So, uh, I think that's very important policy. If the Thai government has that policy, all of our universities will be very happy. And I think this should be um, uh, um, a given to all of the universities under OHE to really to, uh, to, to bring in ASEAN students. Um, on the other hand, uh, to take our students out uh, to ASEAN or to Europe, uh, that, that's uh, it's easy to take them to Europe. They all want to go to Europe, as you witnessed by the Erasmus Mundus program. But to take them out to ASEAN is very difficult. We have to work very hard to try to urge them to go to study in the ASEAN universities. But uh, for exchange, we are getting more successful, I think, with AIM. So perhaps start with, with exchange. So certainly, certainly, this is, we'll, uh, with, with a, a grant, we can move forward quite quite a lot quickly uh, from our experience. Um, I would like to suggest also that uh, there is no need, absolutely no need, to invite international universities to come to open branches here because we have plenty of good universities here to support that uh, internationalization. And Thai universities, uh, well, I think they're quite visible. I mean, I, I'm quite visible in ASEAN. Uh, uh, I, I, I think what we can do more to make our universities more visible. Uh, but I think they, they all want to come to Thailand. Life here is good. Uh, they want to come to study here. So I think uh, this is very important. I'm, I'm, I'm so pleased that the EU has a new program share uh, that uh, I look forward very much to working with the EU on that. Uh, certainly, this will push our internationalization forward very far. May I also add uh, another um, piece of information that there is, I think there are at least two other networks, uh, the ASEAN, um, which one, ASEAN, you can talk uh, you can tell us a little bit about that. Another one is ASEAN UNINET. ASEAN UNINET uh, is the uh, European and ASEAN uh, university network and that is quite a large network. Uh, it has not been very active recently because of lack of funding. And uh, I would like to suggest the EU Commission to have a look at ASEAN UNINET and perhaps we can work with ASEAN UNINET to add more activities to more universities in, as in ASEAN and Europe. So, uh, maybe I also add
uh, actually maybe you may have to ask yourself uh, whether you have uh, grabbed the opportunity to, to participate with, with ACQ or not. Uh, for ACQ Unimet, uh, actually ACQ Unimet is starting from, uh, it is like about 20 years ago, it starts from uh, Innsbruck and July and then it expands to include uh, different countries in the I think it's a very uh, interesting uh, uh, network and, and you should uh, find it, uh, information about Ansel Unionet. I, I used to be a chairman of Ansel Unionet uh, for, for one year and, and I'm pretty big also uh, to know that very well. So uh, that, that is something that uh, maybe this is also come to my point that uh, my, I'm not quite sure that you know when we want to promote collaboration, we want to promote uh, exchange. Seem to me that maybe it happened only to myself. Uh, Seem to me that we do not know others that well. Yesterday there was a, a professor. Uh, come to see me from, from, from our faculty of education and uh, they want to organize uh, a seminar in comparative research. And he asked me whether I know anyone who do comparative research in Asia. Uh, what I can think of is not ASEAN. It is like uh, those friends from Japan. Uh, maybe those who know university in ASEAN very well is not the ASEAN itself. It is like uh, a colleague in, in Japan, different university. They know ASEAN quite well. Uh, and we don't have anyone who do a very good comparative research on high education in ASEAN. But this comes to the point that uh, do we know each other that well in ASEAN? And even, uh, you know, when, when uh, Matt talked about the AUNT, I still remember that the first day when the very, uh, when the EU expert uh, came to meet with me at that time, I was an uh, executive director of AUN. My feeling is that this expert didn't know anything about ASEAN. Uh, he wanted to promote uh, collaborate with only public university and public university. He is aware that in ASEAN we have quite a big number of private universities. Uh, universities in Europe is uh, most, if not all of them, are public universities. This is, I'm not talking about uh, UK, uh, the, the, the mainland Europe. And uh, so we spend some time to discuss that the AUNT should also allow private university to be in the network. It took me, it took me some time because he didn't understand that uh, why do we have to include private university. But actually we have different categories of, of private university, for profit, not for profit. Anyway, uh, we, that, that, that told me the story that Sometimes uh, we don't know each other that well. Like, like we, we're talking a lot about uh, the uh, grant, we're talking about student mobility. But actually, if we look at the number of the student mobility, if we look at uh, those uh, students going abroad, a majority of them is self-paid students. And, and because uh, for, for Europe, you're talking uh, that the high education, if you want to go to school, you don't have to pay. But uh, US is another story. Uh, when I, 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 I talk about this because uh, maybe there are also another sector that we have to tap. Like when uh, Ajahn Kalaya talk about him, uh, when we start, uh, the original name is the MIT, when we start that project. Uh, I was very surprised uh, at, at, at that uh, is the one who championed it. And when we start that project, 
uh, I remember that there was uh, we asked only like five, six universities from Indonesia, but they came like twenty of them, and there are uh, Indonesia. They have now maybe about three thousand uh, universities and colleges, but only uh, eighty national universities. Uh, but there are students that are waiting to join at that time their MIT and they want to pay by themselves. So they, they are those group of students. I have been asked, like my colleague who is in, in uh, Indonesia, she said that she, she asked me that if the government of Indonesia want to send uh, the, the student to study uh, nurse in Thailand, is it possible? If uh, they want to send a student to study higher, higher education in Thailand, it is possible. Like for, I checked back to at July at that time. We, at that time, we don't have an international program on higher education. And we also don't have a, a good uh, nurse program in that part in English. So actually, uh, there are also demand from other countries. Uh, with this uh, full pay student, they can pay by themselves or government can pay for them. But uh, we also need to, to have a good international program. And if we have a good international program, I think you can also tap another sector, which is the, 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 the uh, student who can sell paid student. We, 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 we can tap that. So, uh, I think uh, I, I mentioned this because one, we may have to promote more uh, cooperative, uh, comparative research in higher education in ASEAN. We, we don't have that body of knowledge. Uh, second, uh, don't, uh, don't forget that there are another sector, the one, the student that are uh, able to pay and would like to pay, that would like to come. Uh, but maybe we have to do something to, to do more, as uh, Ajahn Pinati mentioned, make ourselves uh, visible. But visible in, in a way, maybe we have to visible, uh, not only visible, but, uh, not only put our name on the world map, but maybe we also have to make it known that if you want to go for this program, you come here. And, and I think there are, uh, with, with the, the AEC, that opportunity is open. And we may have to, every university has to, to look at themselves what they can do best. Okay, uh, now I would like to mention about the uh, uh, program in Thailand and Europe that uh, the IBH Commission uh, offering to students. Uh, each year we have what we call the ASEM Duo Mobility Program. That will give a chance for students, for undergraduate students mostly, uh, to take uh, one semester studies in one of the European universities. But this, this, this program has to be a reciprocal. That means the host the sending university have to host students from uh, Europe in your uh, university as well. It need not be the same discipline, can be different disciplines, such as uh, if you send an engineering student to study in Europe, you may receive a student from social science to study at your university. Uh, this program has been running for a number of years. What I have observed, observed is that there are only few applicants apply uh, to, to these uh, scholarships. Uh, we provide funding support for the students who wish to go there to spend one semester, maybe four months, to send them and transfer credit back to your own program. Uh, the reason that I have yes is first the readiness of the student. I mean, in terms of the language competency, the English competency, that means that 
we require uh, uh, English test of the IELTS about above uh, five plus five or six. Or uh, the TOEFL may be ninety uh, in the for the in the test, such as like this. That means those uh, university who wish to send their students or to join this program have to inform the student that you choose be ready and to increase your English competency before applying. Second, under this uh, project, if you want to send a student there, that means you have to know them. You might have an MOU with them first. Otherwise, very difficult to exchange a student. That means the international body in your university have to I mean, expose yourself to European university and develop some kind of agreement beforehand. The third observation is that uh, some UC do not have such a, I would say, orientation for the student. It doesn't mean that you have qualified students ready to go and let them go. You need to inform them, educate them, to prepare them to be placed in another university. How to adapt to the new environment. How to uh, I mean, make use of this opportunity to your future. It's a very important thing. Just don't, just don't let them go only. This is a duty, it's a job of the international office that has to prepare for this. Uh, this can happen, that I, I, I tell you that you have to, to take the first move first. You cannot let, them, and let everything to come to your table waiting for them. You have to be proactive to do this. And I have observed that those programs, those UC who are qualified and have uh, be able to grab this scholarship always with the same name, the same faculty. So I want to expand and see more universities, more faculties apply to this scholarship as a new. Yeah, this is just that my uh, uh, observation about Thailand and, and Europe. And we hope we have in fact uh, our education commission, we have a, also have a project with not only with the student but for staff. For example, uh, Thailand and, and France, we have a Franco Thai meeting. This will focus on the collaboration in research work between staff of Thai University and French University. And the uh, program is fully funded, Cover, covering the expenditure of the, the research work, the travel costs between the two countries. And again, I also observe that both the same names appear every year. How can we have more new names joining this? It's your job. Thank you very much, Dr. Penn. So we have a, a broad uh, array of views there and uh, points on the, the micro and macro context of, of internationalization, internationalization of education, not just in Thailand, but regionally and internationally. Uh, very interesting points on the opportunity to project Thailand as, as a center, as a hub for education, using it, using the scholarship as soft power, uh, and in essence, education and the higher education experience is a huge driver of soft power and creation of an ambassador for the country in, in many different countries. Um, that brings us to the close of, of this phase uh, of the, the panel discussion um, and I believe now we have some opportunity uh, to, to hear from the floor um, in terms of your questions and some of the questions uh, by the panel uh, to consider. Uh, so I'd like to thank all the participants of the, the panel discussion. Uh,
this point and open up the floor.